Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Game, your one-stop shop for everything cool in video games. I'm one of your hosts, Drew Bosley. Don't forget to head to InsideTheGame.ca, where there you can be a part of the show. Now, some housekeeping news. The guys from Inside the Game are heading to the Northern Gaming Expo on Saturday, April 27th. We'll be there with the booth and putting on our own panel, so stop by and say hello. Now, coming up on today's episode, Randall and I hit the tracks with Trials Rising. Corey and I discussed one of the biggest games this year with Anthem. Nate and Scott talk about Warhammer. There's a different twist. Check this out and a whole lot more in today's episode. And first, here's the guys with the Inside Scoop. So Pokemon has turned 23 recently, and with that, we got the announcement of Pokemon Sword and Shield. We got a little tease with the three new starter Pokemon and a huge kind of glimpse at the huge open world that's coming. So great exciting news from Pokemon. All right guys, we got some big games coming to Games with Gold for March 2019. Some of the games you get to look forward to are Adventure Time, Pirates of the Enchiridion, available March 1st to March 31st. Plants vs. Zombies, Garden Warfare 2, available March 16th to April 15th. Star Wars Republic Commando, available March 1st to March 15th. Metal Gear Rising, Revengeance, available March 16th to 31st. Good news for Mortal Kombat fans, as the roster has been expanded with the new reveal video for Johnny Cage, everyone's favorite Hollywood nutcracker. I know studio execs tougher than you. No suit's gonna slit your throat. All right, Borden, let's head to Skittergate and prevent the chaos from taking over. All right, Scott, so we got hands-on with Warhammer Vermintide 2, this kind of beat-me-up RPG Warhammer-style Left 4 Dead game. What did you think of it? That is uh, quite a mix-up, but I think that's pretty accurate. That sums up a lot of it. There's uh, a lot of big number game happening, uh, a lot of equipment, a lot of... It's a big world. It's uh, kind of a big mix of a lot of these concepts. I like uh, the Left 4 Dead aspect of it for sure. Okay, yeah, so like... Left 4 Dead, we haven't seen Left 4 Dead in quite a few years, right? And Warhammer Bird Type 1 kind of replicated that, and that was nice, and like, I played it, but it didn't really hook me. But when I started playing this, oh my goodness, it enticed me right away. Just playing the prologue alone, they've added abilities with these five different characters that you can pick, and just that alone, it just added this whole kind of RPG element to it. Almost like a class-based thing that was missing from Left 4 Dead. There was, everybody just had a, the same gun, the same melee, and no powers of any kind. This is really cool because not only do you have powers as characters, but you can, your powers can change depending on how long you spend with that character. You get more things unlocked. You can choose your whole weapon set to fight differently. So you might think that you have a squishy character, but you armor them up, tank them up to be more tanky, and you're just clearing waves of rats, just like anyone else. So in this game, you have the same returning five heroes from the first one. and. In the first one, they, they all were very similar. You know, they, they were different. They had different, I guess, weapon types. But that's all that really felt different, different in the height. first one. <laughs> yeah, different heights. <laughs> but with this one, now each, of them, each uh, character has three classes within it, each with a passive ability and a special ult ultimate ability. And just that alone, it just really, it just made each character very unique. For example, one guy, uh, the dwarf, he can drop ammo based on the kills he gets, or there's a, this passive where he, he does damage and he drops ammo for the ranged characters, and that coincides really well with somebody like the archer who's just lo loosing arrows all day. Yeah, like, so you, I play as the archer myself, and personally, I, I like the boat with high ammo, low damage, and it just, you know, getting those ammo drops all the time really helps. But with, my, with the uh, elf character that I use, 
Her passive ability on one of her classes is that she gets an extra dodge distance just automatically, which when you're playing as her, that's the whole part of the game is you're kind of da dancing around, dodging you have to around. Play around all these rats. Exactly. And her other passive ability on the other class is that she gets to slowly regenerate health if she's below 50 health. So just these little tweaks that they have between the classes and all these characters. I mean, we've only talked about two of the characters. They all have very unique abilities that you slowly unlock. And it's just, it's really good, man. At the very beginning, in the prologue of the game, you're, you're, being, you're in a cage and you're being trotted along, about to be sacrificed. But then what happens is the Chaos Lord screws up the skitter gate and since it malfunctions your cage falls down and then from there you escape rescuing the other four champions that you're or heroes that you're with and that's kind of the start of the game so the basically the whole premise is the skaven and the chaos have bound together and are trying to form or open this huge portal to summon a huge chaos champion so it, it sounds simple in essence but the whole game all the missions they all perfectly play together to do this really cool story. One of the most important things about the hub world that you come back to is the crafting and the equipment. Between missions you want to level your guy up to the max, see what you can handle, and take on the next highest mission to get the better loot. So that brings you to a couple different people that you talk to repeatedly. One is this kind of armorer guy and another is a merchant. And then you have your kind of room in the castle where you have your equipment and you can play around with your characters. Yeah, and another thing too that they added was there's a training area for this. So with all these different weapons, because each character has a plethora of different weapons, you know, whether it be ranged with different types of bows, crossbows, different or guns, or a spear, a sword and a dagger, two swords, two daggers, clave, like there's just like an endless amount. So within the hub, you're able to go and just quickly test out and it shows you damage numbers. They have armored targets that you can practice on. It's just that extra little feature really like, you don't want to do an entire mission with a weapon you don't like. It saves so, you from burning 15, 20 minutes on a mission exactly. you just don't really like the character or whatever. So like the hub world alone, it's just, they, it, again, it's a nice refined, it's, it's really built well and it's pretty. And, and it's, it's very manageable. All, like, you can go everywhere in the hub world to, like, easy. let's say, uh, craft your weapons. There's a spot in the hub for it. But if you want, everything's accessible by just pressing start. Press start, you have your salvage and all your crafting tabs right there. You have your equipment tabs right there. You have your cosmetic tabs. Everything's just, like, super easy and accessible, which, again, is just another huge plus for this game. You know, just to add to that extra amazingness of this game, when you're playing, and then out of nowhere, you hear the war drums of the oh, chaos yeah. or the war drums of the Skaven, and you can just hear the clang, the clanging of their armor and their the swords and the blood boiling. And then all of a sudden, hundreds of rats and chaos minions are just charging over. It's just, it's something that is unmatched in a lot of games. So honestly, man, okay, we gotta score this game because I could go on forever how sweet this game is. That's too much so <laughs> what are you gonna score Warhammer 2? I really liked it. I think the action is really cool, really easy to get into. Uh, the numbers are very chaotic though. There's a little bit too much menu system for me, but I would give that a seven for sure. All right, I'm actually quite a bit higher. I love this game. I'm gonna go with an 8.5.
This game is a huge improvement from its predecessor and is the most advanced in its genre. With creative level design, a strong rewarding RPG system, great characters, and a massive variety of weapons and skills, this game is a must play. All right, Drew, we're heading back to the tracks and pulling off some sick stunts. Let's do it. So, Drew, this week we had a chance to take a crack at <laughs> Trials. What yeah. did you think? Yeah, Trials Rising is back. Thank goodness. Man, I missed this title. So they came out with Trials Fusion, I want to say last year or year before. Yep. And I had a good time with it, but I didn't have a great time, right? That no. future setting just didn't really kind of sell me on it. Yeah. Trials Rising has got me hooked right back in. This is phenomenal. The, mm -hmm. the world, the tracks that they've kind of come back with now, Huge. they're big. There are certain small tracks, right? Because yeah. they're only meant yeah. to give you, get you kind of through there, get to the next checkpoint and get yeah. in your race. But how they've gone and crafted the world, the world around the tracks are massive. Mm -hmm. The track mm -hmm. itself is so well done, it's mm -hmm. so well laid out, and it's so grounded. I love the fact that I'm on. I'm driving on a lot of wood or dirt. Yes. I'm not on like a lot of metal in the future setting, right? That setting no, just that didn't really do it for me. Yeah. So coming back here with Trials Rising, man, this is rising to the top of my game list right now. Absolutely. And like first impressions for me, like I'm used to, you know, the, the typical trials where like you have some bigger jumps and lower drops, but in this game, like they're just massive. Like I'm on the screen, yeah. like whoa, like just playing, <laughs> like oh my god. And I, I found, you know, even though. You have that like huge, you know, sense of depth when you're dropping down. Yeah. It still felt very much like a very typical trials game where I was able to land, you know, kind of, you know, throw my weight and get my bike going the way I needed to. And it was yep. just, but like, like you kind of touched on it too, where like you know, you're in these um, levels, like one where there's one where there's like this train running through, and you're constantly like, jumping yeah, over this was train. I was like, awesome. oh, this is so cool. Like, way to go, guys. Like, this is really well done. Yeah, no, they really paid attention to a lot of the details, right? They've set up the world so that when you are just doing the track, because it is, it's from point A to point B, and there's no veering off this track no, whatsoever. No, there's not. So when you're side scrolling, but they've changed it so that the camera will sometimes pull out, or the actual track will start to turn, mm, right? Yeah. They introduced that last year, yeah. but the last, with Fusion, that the, actually the track will curve now. Mm. So they brought that atmosphere back, but when the camera pulls out and you hit this jump, you were like way up there. Way up, yeah. But, if you know how to play Trials and you play Trials properly, mm -hmm. you're not going for the air, you're going for the speed. speed. Yeah. So hitting that big air, it may look nice, but it's not what you're really after. No, no, it really isn't. No, it's it's really true because like you catch that big air, but you want that speed. Because like I don't know about you, but like well, I'm trying to get points, so I'm like doing flips, I'm trying yeah. to do as much as I can, and you have so much air and clearance you're actually able to do them this way. I found it was a little bit more limited with Fusion. I don't know if that was just yeah, my experience, but... No, I know what you mean. You know, and just, just overall, like, the game is so much fun, like, I actually had to laugh because, like, you're watching the long screen, it actually has, like, different, like, tips and what have you. One tip was, just one more time, player at 2 a.m. I thought, you know, yeah, how cool is that that they throw that in there, right? Because you know <laughs> people have said that about this game, like, it's so <laughs> addictive. Well, that, and that's the good part about Trials, is the minute you screw up, it's just a click of the button, you can either go back to the checkpoint, or you can instantly start the whole race over again. Mm -hmm. What they added this year, though, is that Ghost. You've seen yes. those, I don't know how I feel about this, Randall, I gotta be honest. I like the fact that it's just me. Yeah. And let me yeah. go, right? And let me do it. But then at the same point, I found that when that ghost is in front of me, mm -hmm. it really it pushes. Push, it yeah. does push me. So it's kind of got that give and take. I'm, I'm kind of feeling with it. At one point, I, or one part, I do enjoy the fact that the ghosts are there. But the other part of it, I just want the old trials where it's just just me on the track. Yeah, absolutely. 
you know, and like like I said, you know, graphically the game's pretty. It plays really well. You yeah. Know, like the the AI and the physics engine are just bang on. The only thing I guess I can kind of wish I say that I wish they would kind of figure out better was you know the loot drops. Man, this okay. What the heck is this? <laughs> okay, Trials is all about customizing yeah. your rider, your rider, right? Yeah. With new bike mechanics, new gear for your bike, new helmet for yourself, new jacket, mm -hmm. pants, mm -hmm. whatever, right? Really quirky looking outfits, oh, all yeah. that kind of stuff. But they've done it now that the minute you level up your character, it gives you yeah. this weird loot drop. Yeah. I'm like, this, why? Why, why, why do that to and this game? why do I want a sticker that's in the shape of a white, oh. like, pentagram? Like, There's I'm sorry. There's so yeah. many stickers. Every yeah. time you level up, you get two stickers and then some experience. Or you get, you finish a race, there's some more stickers. It's all, honestly, you know what I got was sticker, 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 sticker. Yeah. A jacket, sticker, sticker, sticker. Same Cheers. jacket. Yeah. Sticker, sticker, sticker. Like, I just got... So the clothing I am unlocking mm -hmm. is the same clothing I already have. So then I sell it to catch it in for coins, but at the same time I'm like, just give me something new. And then if you take a look, because you can then, because now there's a big focus I saw this year with an emphasis of going online and playing yeah. competitively yeah. in a sense, right? So you're fighting for the leaderboards or just a common race, whatever. But they have added in animations for yes. when you lose or when you win. Yep. But the grind out for those animations are expensive. Oh, it is expensive. I was floored at how much those were. I ended up getting a drop where my guy's like this. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, all right I guess I'll go with that for now. And it's not what I want. And some of them, some of them are really, I'm just like, these are, no, these yeah, aren't cool. Yeah, mediocre. There's the one though, it's got the dab. I, oh, yeah. That was cool. <laughs> but you have to pay for that one. Did you, you notice do. that? Yeah. This is disappointing, Ubisoft. I'm not happy about this at all. I can't even grind for it. You're making me pay for that one. That's not cool at all. I'm not a big fan of that. No. If I got to grind out, if that's one of your top tier things, then let me grind for grind it. Grind out for it. Yeah. But I don't want to pay for it. If I'm paying for the game, don't make me force in these microtransactions. And that's exactly what they've done here, unfortunately, with yeah. Trials Rising. Yeah, they really have. Although the one thing I can't say I was really pleased to see was at the end of the level you cross the finish line, you're always going to crash into some sort of obstacle. <laughs> yeah. I actually had a really moment where I had to really laugh when I was playing it again this morning, where I get through and all of a sudden this ambulance backs up and hits me like runs over me. Oh, like, yeah. I'm so glad they kept like that much fun and spirit in the game as they always have. So well, there's definitely a sense of humor with trials, right? They've always had that quirkiness with them. There's one where you end and it, you land on a catapult and it just boom mm, and yeah. it sends you flying, right? Yeah. So they've always got these things. I got this big ball of fire that dropped right on me and I got I was lit up. Yeah, yeah they take that spin that's still here. It's a still a trials game at heart. Yeah. I really enjoy it. They also added this year Trials University. Yes. Which I thought was really helpful because it helps those who aren't familiar with the game mm -hmm. to get comfortable with how the mechanics work. Because let's be honest, you can play easy. Anybody can play easy, oh, yeah. Yeah, but absolutely. let's get into the hard mode. Because once you get into hard mode, you really need to understand how you're supposed to shift your weight and spring your bike ahead. And yeah. then, then you're backing up on one tire. Like you need to balance at some points at one, one tire and roll backwards. Yeah. Right, like that's just not what we're used to. No. But trials, that's what this game is all about, that's is right. getting those complicated moments and getting achieved. The thing is when you, man, it can be so frustrating when you fumble and you fumble and you fumble it's and you fumble. Yeah. But it's so rewarding when you actually pull off that back tire and then spring yourself off and you're off yep. to the next one and you get it and then you've completed the race, you got your three skulls and away you go. And that's how they've always done this game and that's why it continues to be as popular as it does. So following that, Drew, if you had, you know, we're gonna wrap it up, if you had to give a, you know, a, a score, what would you give it? All right, so I really do love Trials Rising. I think Ubisoft has crushed it once again. This is a fantastic game. It is very competitive. Yep. Those microtransactions really sting, I gotta be honest. They do. Yep. The track editor, again, is back. That is back, so I'm able to download really and cool upload feature. tracks. So yep. that keeps the community alive. I'm there with an eight. Yeah. I'm right there with an eight too. Definitely give this game a, a good go, guys. Trials is back with more addicting gameplay that pushes you for that just one more try. I've got this feeling. A more grounded feel this time makes Trials Rising feel like a throwback to previous titles, but microtransactions for the good animations and better loot is very disappointing. All right, Curry, so with a lot of new players hopping in Rainbow Six Siege, here's our top five tips.
Support neutralized. Mission. Friendly fire. For all you new Siege players, be aware that friendly fire is a thing. Make sure you pick your shots as to not accidentally eliminate one of your own teammates. Droning is a very important feature in this game. Whether it be at the start of the match and you're scouting the defensive team and you're trying to find where the bomb, hostage, and biohazard location is, or whether it's just before hopping in a room and or entering the building for the first time, always scout out the area with your drone. camera locations inside and out. Always be aware of the defender's camera locations. The sooner you can eliminate the defender's visuals, the more success you and your team will have completing the objective. Protect the biohazard container. Stop the hostiles from securing the biohazard container. Stop the hostiles from securing the container. They ceased attempting to secure the container. Op uh, four limited. Operator selection. Building your team around each other is key. Each operator brings a different set of skills, be it Jaeger's ADS mines or Bandit's electrified wall reinforcements. So be aware of what operators are chosen to best align your team for a win. Working as a five-man squad is the key to success in Siege. Letting your teammates know enemy and objective locations, whether it be by spotting them with a drone or pinging them on screen. Make sure you always keep an open line of communication to ensure your team's success. Alright Corey, it's time to suit up. Go get your javelin. Let's go! Check in. I've got you, Faye. Loud and clear. Yeah, the way link is strong so far. Storm gets worse ahead. Trying to find a calm pocket for you. Steady, Miller. Your heart rate is too high. Alec, check in, please. A little bit, okay? No worries on me. All right, Corey, we're jumping into Javelin Suits because we are playing Anthem from BioWare, also with a little help of EA. Yes. Ooh, I think that might be a problem here. Because why? Because <laughs> we are, as much as we enjoy the game right now, because yeah. you and I have been talking about this title for a long time. Yeah, it's been a topic on the show for the last few weeks just on the show, but we've actually yes. been talking about this game for much longer than that. Absolutely, and now that we've dove in so much and played, and honestly, I love this game, but yeah. there are some 
issues that are kind of starting to arise now that I'm kind of hitting that end peak of the game. Yeah, you've been grinding a little bit more than me, yeah. so you're getting to a point of the game where now you're starting to see some things that are becoming a little repetitive, Yep. and we're not getting a whole lot of promise for new content coming up here in the future, or at least as of right now. Well, and this is honestly the biggest part. So if anybody hasn't heard of Anthem, well, really? Come on now. <laughs> Anthem is basically Iron Man yeah. in the video game. This is how an Iron Man game should feel and play because you jump into a javelin suit. There are four classes, Interceptor, Storm, Colossus, and the Ranger. I jumped into three of these classes so far. Yeah, I've got two of them. And yeah, you joined the Colossus? Yes, Colossus and Ranger. Ranger, and I've yeah. got Storm, Interceptor, and the Ranger. The Interceptor, I just don't feel. I don't connect with that one. But no. the whole premise of this is the Anthem is out there. The Anthem is the all be all and creator of the world. And there's someone out there to try to harvest this power. Yeah. We're out there to protect it. Exactly. All hell broke loose. Things gone crazy. But we are back in now with our javelins. And the javelins are cool, except my javelin looks like your javelin, like that javelin, <laughs> that guy's javelin. And I'm just giving it. Except mine's blue and yours oh, is green. Big deal. It's, yeah, so. Yours is a different color. Good for you. The gameplay in this game, right off the hop, when we first tried the beta, when we first got into that, right after launch. Yeah. It's awesome. It Absolutely. feels almost larger than life because the world, the whole environment oh. that you're in, the open world is beautiful. Yep. It's, yeah, you know, you, there's no bounds, especially in these suits where you can fly vertically up high. They really don't limit you in where you're going for the most part. Obviously, we're guided on a path when we're doing these missions, but yeah. if you're just flying around, there's a lot to discover in this world. And from what I've heard, it's going to be the kind of environment that they're going to change over time. Which is a nice thing to think of when you're playing a game like this where you know it's going to be a grind throughout the whole game where some of these missions seem repetitive, but they're still enjoyable. It's not that, you know, that's what these kind of RPG style games are about, right? Where you've yes. got these missions and we're going to be grinding and grinding to get these levels, get better weapons, better, you know, better abilities, things like that. But this one, it falls a little short with, like you said, now where you're at, kind of in this end game area where yeah. now you're just getting the same weapons over and over again, they're just oh. a different color. This is what we fear the entire time, right? Anthem started off so strong for yeah. me that I fell in love instantly. I love the story and how it's unfolding. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that I have javelins I can customize. The problem with my javelin is I got three different helmets. Yeah. And that's all three. I got is three. I have three helmets. What am I supposed to do after that? <laughs> because when I jump into a lobby, sometimes with four, there's now four storms in the same lobby. Yeah. You have that helmet. I have that helmet. And I'm like, come on. This isn't enough. The store itself for the game to customize your javelin is so limited. It's, it's ridiculous. It's really weak. It, it, there's it's no just options. Disappointing. Yeah, for a game like this where they really focus on the amount of things you can customize with your javelin suit is awesome. I like the ability to change the armor, change your weapons in and out, kind of yeah. customize how the game feels for you when you play through it. Yeah. But when they only give you so many options for changing how your javelin suits look, there is no way to be like, well, you know, you'll see somebody else's suit and say, wow, that's awesome. Like, I kind of want, you know, that piece and that piece. And maybe you see how they play and you're looking for that gun. But now we're, it's, everybody's just going to have the same stuff. You know, I look at now and go, hey, look at your javelin. Yours is blue and mine's red. And that's it. Right? And I have Storm. So if you're a Storm, yours is just a different color because mm -hmm. we all look the same now. We got into this one mission, and I thought I selected a mission from earlier on in okay, the game. Let's back up first. Yeah. First of all, we went, me, Nate, and you. Yeah. Right? Okay. But me and Nate joined your party. Yeah, joined which means you're the party leader, so we should be going off of your story. I agree. All right, as you were. Yeah, so again, I was fumbling through the menu system, trying <laughs> to course. figure out a mission for us to go on. I assumed yeah. it was going to be one of the earlier on missions. Yeah. And I found one on the map, selected it, and said, okay, guys, I got one. Everybody kind of readied up, and we jumped into the mission. Yep. Uh, we start getting into it, and it starts getting deeper and deeper. The, there's a bit more of a story to this mission. We're not just, you know, collecting something or yes. killing these things or, you know, just stuff along those lines, your regular grinding kind of thing. Yep. We start running into, you know, a lot of waves of enemies. And now we're on this multi-stage mission where yeah. we're kind of fighting like mini boss, mini boss, huge boss oh, at the end. So and good. Man, we had a blast doing it. But the problem was, it was from your game. It was my mission. It was like 15 hours ahead of where I'm playing, uh, and it gave away some major uh, components to this game. Which was awful. I feel so bad for you, but <laughs> yeah. I had a great time. Oh, that's the like, thing. Man, I haven't played this. How is it? <laughs> How did you get to this part? Because I'm not, what? <laughs> no, this is my story. Yeah. And you lost 
so much because there was a pivotal point within oh, my story man. that you witnessed yeah. and you shouldn't have witnessed no. at all because we were in your lobby. Yeah. That is a huge issue. It's a big time issue. And I mean, I'm not going to be heartbroken about it. It's just a video game and I still had a blast playing that oh, mission so with you guys. Yeah. But at the same time, as I know now in about 15 hours from where I'm at currently, I know what's going to happen, who I'm facing, what it's going to require. So I'm going to need you guys again. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's disappointing in that sense. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that that's happened to. No. And they have reported issues with people kind of getting their challenges mixed up with the people in their party yeah. and again you guys joined my lobby so we should have been going off my stories but until yeah. I left rejoined and then I was able to pick my missions and then we all went on one of those missions which obviously wasn't as good as the one we went on <laughs> it was but, so fun, but yeah. the, and then I also had to do some things that I wasn't so happy with because I found out some things about some certain characters in your mission I know so it's yeah it is disappointing in that sense but man this what well, is why is this game so much fun but so disappointing in certain areas they they're just missing some of the minor things that they should have paid attention to yeah. with games like Destiny, yeah. The Division. You've already seen these companies make these games and produce them and the downfalls and struggles that they've seen. Yeah. So if you've already seen that, why are you repeating their problems? Yeah, like this game falls in that genre, so yep. why not take successful points from those games and, and, and adapt them to your game? I'm thinking of Apex Legends right now because it's a battle royale game. Yep. We said, we've talked about battle royales like crazy. They've got elements from all these successful games and created a great game that millions of people are playing yes and i absolutely. think that's what ea wants people a million people playing this anthem game but when you grind up to 30 and now you're just getting the same things over and over again we need more game and now i'm gonna put the game away yeah to jump into something else because i've reached this level i'm, I'm just doing the same mission over and yeah, over if you're gonna I don't need to do this I'm just gonna give you the same stuff over and over no, again good. it's gonna get dry it's gonna get boring and i kind of touch on that same point is where you've done this mission over and over again when me, you, and Nate jumped in a game, we had someone else jumping with us that had obviously already done yes. this mission. And a big downfall of this game is if somebody is continuing the path of the mission and you're kind of hanging out and you're not progressing as quickly or you're taking your time, yeah. if someone goes to a certain point, it will warp the entire team so, to that area. And now, now you're jumping ahead and you may be missing things if you've never played through the mission. So well, The issue is, with the, what happens is when you get to these mission points, the minute you touch that part of the mission, it automatically forces you into it, yeah. right? So what I was trying to do, because I was playing earlier today, because I, you know what, I love this. Yeah. I love this game. It's a good game. But I stopped right at the edge of that point so everybody else on my team could catch up. Because yeah. I was in a lobby of randoms. Yeah. So they're off shooting other things and getting loot. Hmm. I've already got all that loot. Yeah. Because the loot is limited because I've got a common, I've got the green, and I've got the blue, mm. and that's it. <laughs> three. There seems to be a fashion here of threes. That's a problem, especially yeah. for a game was designed around loot drops and high tier gear and all that stuff. Everything is threes, yeah. and it's just not enough when you're trying to customize so much to be so different from such a populated game. Well, that's the thing. We've got only got four javelin suits to pick from. I got and, no problem with and, that. And, and no, I know, but when you've only can you need to customize them so limitedly, yep. it's everybody's gonna have the same stuff. Everybody's gonna look the same, and we're already seeing that now. Like I said, the only difference is, is what colors you choose to make your javelin. Okay. And that's the only thing. So we're still complaining because I got one more point. <laughs> Alright? Yeah. Within the main lobby, that hub, I like the hub. The yeah. hub is cool, but there's two stores there. There's a I'm gonna go with there's two stores. Yeah. There, okay, because there's a story point in yeah. another store. But the problem with that store is if I go to both stores, they both have the same stuff in there to buy. Uh -huh. Why? Why yeah, what, is it, what is the point of that? It's not. There's no <laughs> again, it comes back to there's just not enough content to keep me grinding because I got nothing else to level up. Yeah. Especially if I'm going to one store that has the same suit. If I just go to the other store that has the same suit, they're two different people. Yeah, and I can't get a not better cool. price at one place. Come on, give me a break. Nothing. Don't yeah. like it. It's brutal. <laughs> you know what though, with this game, like you said, they've worked on this game for so long and it's so much fun to play and there's elements of this game we love and that's what's going to keep us coming back to this yes, game. Yes, absolutely. But like you said, you're going to get to a point, I'm going to get to a point, anybody that's playing this game is going to get to a point where if they don't support this game somehow, you're going to shelf it and go to the next game. Which is unfortunate because their biggest competition is just around the corner yeah. with the Division 2. And we're going to be playing that game. Absolutely. And I will be relating that game directly to this one because they're similar genre game. And, yeah. man, I want to love Anthem more than I already do, they're, but they're not allowing us to. The problem is, so the Division 2 not even out yet, and Ubisoft's already talking about endgame content. Yeah. So Anthem is out. And we don't have a clue what their end game content is. No, because right now it's nothing. Nothing. 
It's just keep grinding the same missions, and that's where it's starting to get repetitive for me because as I then 30 hours into the game, I'm starting to reach that top level now of yeah. it's the same stuff over that and cap. over and over again. Yeah, right? it's difficult. So I'm still getting the same guns because their guns are limited. Yeah. It's, I can't even customize my gun, which yeah. is, man, let me customize my gun. Even I can just put a different color on it or, yeah. or something. A right? weapon skin or something. It's just, just the yeah. same gun. Havoc, if you guys get a Havoc, man, just go with the Havoc because you don't need another gun. No, it's pretty that good. Thing just, it's a good and one. And just plows through it's everything. Yeah. But I'm able to upgrade my tiers for it, but that's it. That's all. Yeah. And it's just falling short because it's not enough. So I said, when you look at Destiny and the mouse stuff, you can customize within your characters for Destiny and the guns and so on and so forth. You're missing the pivotal points from all these top tier games already for what you're trying to compete with. It's a big misstep for a game that they hyped up so big. And when it launched, like I was excited when this game dropped. Yeah. And you know, we thought about it all for a while. We've seen people writing about it since the beta, about issues with the game. And you're like, all right, well on release, like I'm gonna play this game. Let yep. us be the judge of this game. I want my own opinion of it. But it's, it's tough because now we're falling into this group of all these people that are talking about these issues with this game. And I don't wanna be a part of that because I wanna no. enjoy the game more than I'm disappointed in it. And it's tough to say that at some point my enjoyment for this game is going to fade and my disappointment is going to grow because if they're not expanding it, then I have no more game to play. Well, that's just it. We're, as I said, I'm starting to reach this point now yeah. where I'm starting to feel all this stuff, kind of this pivotal point where I'm stopping at everything, right? Yeah. Because I'm all my gear is starting to get up there. And if I'm only leveling up my gear, it doesn't really do that much because there's no cosmetic options or nothing else to make it feel as special. Yeah. Like, I love this game. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. The, the gunplay... The way the javelin suit feels, the flying system the in this flying game mechanic is awesome, incredible, it's so much to fun. To be able to go right to the as far as high as you can go and dive straight down into the water, and even like the underwater mechanic, everything about this game is awesome, yeah. except for the customization options and the end gear yeah. game, which is the biggest. It's, yeah, but that Problem. makes these games, right? So it's like, oh man, you gotta <laughs> give me some reason yeah. to continue on with your game. I agree. I'm this close. To finishing the game. Yeah. We gotta score this game, Drew. And I know it's gonna be a tough one. So what do you think you're gonna do? Okay, so honestly, as much as I've griped about this game. Yeah. The fact that I'm able to jump in with so many people, the four of us, and go out and do our thing and then just keep doing it, that repetitive stuff, I still have a blast playing. Well, because when you blow those scars Woo! up, ooh, man, that's fun. It's yeah. a good time. I have a blast playing this game. So I've taken a lot of points and made kind of good points and I've made bad points about this game. So take those in consideration yeah. when I give this score of a nine. Okay, all right, all right. You know what, I kind of thought you'd be around there. Yeah. I'm gonna, I won't be as high as you. I've been thinking about it too because I've been playing this game and I've been reading a lot of articles of how people have been playing it. And with these issues that are arising for the end game and you know, lack of customization, I want to give this game a higher score, but I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. That's fair. Anthem is a fun and creative take on the RPG genre. The javelin suits look and feel really good in-game, but the lack of customization for the suits can result in a lot of people having similar looks. All right, guys, so rumors have been flying that Microsoft is going to team up with Nintendo to bring Game Pass to the Nintendo Switch. How do we feel about this? Ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has the potential to be huge. Yes, it yeah. does. I think there's a lot of routes they can take. We discussed this kind of a bit on the podcast this yep. week about what we kind of thought Microsoft, Nintendo, how they were going to maybe manage this and set it up. I mean, sure. it's all speculation at this point. We don't know what's going on with this yet, but... The potential's huge. I mean, if we bring, you know, game sharing, Xbox Live service to the Nintendo Switch platform, I mean, yeah. holy cow. Well, they're just tapping into a whole other audience that they don't have, right? Yeah. If you only own a Nintendo Switch and all of a sudden Microsoft says, here, you can now have our service too, 
How many other people are going to pick up the Switch and then get Xbox Game Pass, get Xbox Live, yeah. and get all that and get going on their system to the point where maybe they just shift over and have two consoles now. They have the Switch and the Xbox. That's a huge market there that they can capitalize on that Sony is just really nowhere near. Well, yeah, sorry, you were going to say no, something. I was going to say that. I, say that. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, Sony's <laughs> always been the I like to play by myself kind yes. of group, right? They don't play well with others. Not right now. Epic managed to bridge that gap for cross-platform play, but we yeah. don't see that anywhere else. No, no. And, you know, this is a good move for Microsoft and Xbox. I think they go in, they partner up with Switch, they say, hey, guess what? Your game sharing kind of platform, online service, yeah. isn't up to snuff for what your console can bring, you know, to that type of community. Yep. So Microsoft comes in and says, hey, guess what? We've got a template, you guys should use it. Let's be buddies. And if this is going to go like we hope it goes, I'm telling you, Sony better watch out. Oh, man. That's the thing. Nintendo Switch, their online service is really lacking. I see my buddies play. Oh, yeah. You play yeah. Super Smash <laughs> all the time. Yeah. And like message each other. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. It makes me wonder if some updates are going to come along with that, some mm. bigger updates. Hopefully, right? That, yeah. So what I'm hoping is maybe they'll just adapt Xbox Live service. Why not? Yeah, you figure they don't really have an infrastructure for their online connectivity, for friends, their friend system. Their, their friend system is a number. They don't have a gamer tag or a PSN name. <laughs> yeah. It's a number. Yeah. I'm like, come on, really? In this day and age? Cutter28. Everybody knows who that is. Yeah. Well, within our group. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. Everybody. Not worldwide yet. But, but you know yeah. what I mean? Like, if uh, someone comes up and says, hey, what's your gamer tag? That's it. Yeah. And then it's not... Well, here's a 20 numbers that you got to write. Like, come on. I might be this dating is... myself, but an ICQ number, if anybody remembers Woo! that old instant message platform. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. yeah. It's like, I don't want to be a number. I want to be able to customize that. Like, that's my online identity. Yep. So Absolutely. Nintendo have, needs some work with their system. And if that's how, if Microsoft's going to come in and even just adapt what they've got going on to make it better, then I don't see how this is going to hurt in any way. Well, streaming nowadays is so huge, right? With Netflix, with Hulu, and all these other systems that are in place that really Nintendo doesn't have. No. And then to bring in Game Pass and Microsoft. Microsoft has worked well with Nintendo over the years. Yeah. So now it's just they're solidifying that relationship, and it's, just, it's exploding into something that could be absolutely massive. Yeah. What I want is see if they use on the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, think about it. Rare, a lot of Rare has been working with Nintendo. Like, that's the thing. Microsoft, Nintendo, they go back from, you well, know, Microsoft's like, oh, here, we'll let you have Rare and make a couple games on your console, no problem. Maybe see these. That would be so cool. It would be oh, on that man. platform. Holy cow! Yeah, I think be it would a lot still of fun. look spectacular. It probably look really good. Well, like, Nintendo's such a family-friendly console, and it's a platforming can yeah. console, right? See if these so family-friendly. Well, yeah, well like, <laughs> I'm just saying. You know what I mean, though, right? But they're talking yeah. about bringing Ori in the Blind Forest, a beautiful platforming game that would fit amazingly oh. well on the Switch. Exactly. Yeah. You'd think it was almost made for that platform, right? Yeah. Yeah. Stylistically, it matches Nintendo, yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. It's right up their alley, and being able to bring something like Game Pass now, where when Microsoft first launched Game Pass, it wasn't, I wouldn't say strong when it came to what titles they had, but over the last, you know, six months, their library has grown, and the games they're putting on there now are, like, we've got some high-quality games on there, and, yeah. like, I got it when it first launched, and I didn't really like the titles that were on there, so oh, I fair. got rid of my subscription, but, you know, over the last few months, I've been checking them out, and the titles that are on there now are, like, they're great. We got some big ones on there. I know Crackdown 3 just dropped, and maybe not everybody's not a huge fan of that one, Dude. but again, it's a, it's a brand new game. It's a $90 game, but yeah. now I only have to pay $11 a month, and I can play that game. Or Absolutely. $2, because they constantly go on sale, sale. and that's true. They've always on. got a deal, whether yeah. it's a, you know, one month for a dollar, or a three-month style deal. Like, they've always got something going on to draw people into this, and if Nintendo picks up any, even a shred of what they're doing here with Microsoft, like I'm telling you, it's just, Sony better watch out. I can't say it enough. Well, it's, it's amazing that they're even contemplating this concept at yeah. all, right? So the Game Pass, a brand new Xbox title automatically goes to Game Pass. So if I have the Switch and I have Game Pass, I now get a brand new Xbox title? Ah, like, man. That, See, that's... It's got to be... Yeah. If you're going to give me Game Pass, that's how this is going to work. Well, that's how it should work. Like? Yeah. But Microsoft needs its exclusives. Yeah. 
That's where that and comes Switch, in, right? Switch. So, so that's the thing. So the games that come out for Switch, like it's just, just going to be an Xbox to Nintendo thing. Like we're obviously not going to get a Nintendo game on Xbox. Right. Well, what if that we get be... Mario on Xbox <laughs> with achievements? Okay, <laughs> Master Chief. Master Chief. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be interesting to see. I don't know. I'm definitely curious to see how this plays out. Alright, so that's our opinion of Microsoft teaming up with Nintendo. Let us know what you think over at InsideTheGame.ca. Alright everybody, we are back with another Game On segment. We are playing Trials Rising. This one I've been waiting for for a <laughs> long time. These guys, maybe not so much. <laughs> it is also on this week's episode of Inside the Game where we are reviewing the game, so you can check that out as well. Right now we're going to jump into party mode. I am player one, I am blue. Uh, player two, and I will be green. Nate's three. Oh. You did it? I did. I just pressed A. That's weird. That's all I'm doing. All right, doing. Nate's player three <laughs> with orange. I was going to say, yeah, orange. Orange. All right, and Steve's red. Yeah. <laughs> right now, the current standings are I have five. Corey has three. Nate has three. Steve has zero. Steve's got some catching up to do, but he can do it. Yeah. yeah. This right. guy looks like he's ready to fight from that stance. It there is. you go. Hey, hey Steve. Looking to tussle. That's <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to get rid of this one. So the way this is going to work is we're going to do seven races. The top two move on where they will battle it out in two hard races. And the winner from that one will be declared the winner for the week. You guys ready to go? Let's do it. Let's, Let's go. Do this. All right. I'm ready to rock. I'm nervous. How about a friendly bet? I'm up for bets. <laughs> <laughs> That's I just saw a thing. That I don't want to bet on. <laughs> I'll bet on for honor or something. Ooh, that one I would not do. I wouldn't say a chance. For I, you gotta let me play it a little bit again, but I take. Yeah, I feel like you uh, could too. You greasy. <laughs> Here we go, boys. Oh. oh, I almost wiped out already. Oh man, it's, I'm just not. <laughs> Every bad. time you fall, you were you lose. I think. Five How did I seconds. fall already? It's all about balance, Nate. Sometimes for trials, it's not about pulling off the style. You're not looking for the big air. You're looking for speed. Get across the track as quickly as possible ahead of everybody else. But every time you fall, you're docked some points. So whoever's four, uh, they're sitting at three already. Four now. Oh, what? And you got to wait for me to catch up. So you, no, uh, I was there. Steve crossed the finish line first. <laughs> I was there. A little penalty points. But so, Steve's suffering so four penalty first points. First across the checkpoint gets a point. No, first across the finish line. Just the finish line. Okay. Finish line. Yeah. Uh, okay. So right now I have four points. Corey has three. Nate has one. Steve has two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sweet. All right. Into the next round. We are going with an easy track, so Squid would probably be the recommended. Oh, I almost fell. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, no, I don't know if we're going to oh, make it. I'm not going to make it. Nader. Oh! Me and Nader are in a race right now. Oh. This is actually going real good. Ooh. Oh, he's got me. Oh, I wiped out. Oh, Corey. I'm wiping out <laughs> before everyone. <laughs> right before everyone. That was a good race, man. Me and you were right there. <laughs> neck nice. and neck. Oh, brush it off. Brush it off. Yeah, I guess so. There you go. <laughs> yeah, don't get too cocky there. <laughs> Orange. <laughs> <laughs> <Leroy Vikings. laughs> right. Medium. The Mantis, eh? That one looks pretty beastly. That one's a more flexible bike, so when you get into the harder difficulties, it allows you to balance and shift your weight oh, a lot. Oh, that actually probably would have been pretty good for that one track we just did. Yeah. Where, yeah, where you're doing more climbing? Yeah. And then flip your bike. I don't know how to do it. Uh, it work. <laughs> I'll just start off over here. <laughs> yeah, like that, that should just be where this one starts. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm flipping too much. When you start flipping in this, it's tough. Oh, it's hard to gain control of it, right? Shoot. Oh. Nah. Yeah. They're coming with some souls. <laughs> Woo! Oh! Oh, is he there? <laughs> There's 
Are you gonna land this? I'm gonna... Oh, I fell. I fell. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, I'm back in. I hate how he just springs oh! you back in. Oh, Corey, don't do it again. Oh! I fell. I, <laughs> I crossed. I hit the. I did that quick flip at the end. I was like, if I don't land this, I'm screwed. But I couldn't. Oh. Momentum carried me through. I can't believe I didn't get that. It all comes down to the end, eh? Because I got two. Oh, man. You fell too many times. Five times. Wow. That's that a tough one. <laughs> I got to make some serious dubs here. <laughs> I got to have. Me and you are back over the rhino. It's just the three types, eh? Or do you get more? As the other? There are others. There's yeah. a dual bike, too. So it's... I saw I saw a load screen of that with yeah. the handlebars on the back, too. Yeah. It's like, this looks like it's a little... Oh, it's Whoa. chaos. <laughs> One person controls the leans, or do you have to both You both got to work together. Oh, oh gosh. What is happening? Oh, we're coming out of a cannon. Oh, apparently. Oh, man. There we go. Nope. 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 That was not smooth. Oh, I'm uh, down. Ooh, can you make that one? Oh. Oh, I fell again. Somehow I don't really feel bad. Oh, Steve's full send. <laughs> Steve's full send. Uh -huh. oh, that, those, those jumps there. <laughs> oh. We all. <laughs> I'm there. Nice, dude. Oh. No! Oh, man, that wipeout was killer. I didn't <laughs> that. Oh, oh I waited for the last guy. Oh, barely. Did I? Oh, you beat me? Get uh, out of here. No way. No, you got me. You're careless, right? No. Careless. Oh, you're careless? You... No. What? Way. Because I, I only fell once. Oh, I made no, sure when not. you guys started bailing, I was like, I got to just... Oh, that's, so, that's why so the bails do matter for something. Yeah, you did say. Yeah. I asked you, and you said, no, you just have to make it to the finish line first. You misheard. That is he what did. you said. We're going to do a replay on this. <laughs> I asked. He did say you're hurt. You're false. Hurt. Maybe not in that conversation. Maybe but... I think I asked you that the first time we played. Yeah. No, as I said, every time you fall, you lose points. Yeah. Yeah. Remember you saying that? And you get one point for passing. Yeah, we, I'm gonna rewind it back. I'm on your side, Drew. I think you did actually give him that one. Uh, I I believe you. Just, man, I didn't. This guy's rocking that. rhinos on easy courses. That's why. This guy's a beast. He's going for the speed. He's going for it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, this is the last round. Top two, we're moving on. Uh, uh, get out now. <laughs> yeah. Leave the field. Oh man. <laughs> oh shoot. I like Steve's go for yeah, it. Oh, I just fell. I was watching Steve because he goes, I'm going to go for it. And you're like, what's he going <laughs> so, for? So I was watching and they fell. <laughs> Wish me again. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I'm going for it. <laughs> Woo, there you go, Corey. Noise. Oh, oh I was gonna say 24, oh, 23. Oh, I knew it was going to be announced. Right? Yeah. All right. So, Corey and I are going to be moving on to hard tracks. Oh. If it is a tie, there will be a decider with a medium track. So, we'll get it out. Oh, man. Okay. Got to go with my careless Gotta angel. Got to go back to your green, eh? <laughs> All right. So, let's get rid of this. Sounds good, man. Ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, here we go. Two Ooh. tracks. Bull session. Real David <laughs> Goliath here. Let's see if we can do it. All right. So you can do the Mantis. Is, is this what you're doing? Or are you a squid guy? No, squid's the easiest one, right? Or not squid, so, rhino. But these guys uh, have practice. Yeah, we'll use that as no, I have no practice. Come on. Man, I don't, yeah, I've never not. seen, <laughs> played, I've not. never played a Trials game. <laughs> yeah, right. No, Man, well, first, <laughs> of all, first of all, shame on you, because yeah. this is a fantastic well, I know, I realized what I've been missing. And I, yeah, see, I've, I've played a little bit. Okay, ready? Almost every. Yeah. You, you probably played every Trials. I'm trying to block out the haters every right now, Drew. That's, you <laughs> need a wall. <laughs> Move the green screen. Yeah. Ooh, maybe you should have went with the other one. Oh. Psych. 
Yeah. Well, this is. These guys have played a lot. Oh, I'm stuck. Man, I didn't realize that bailing screwed your points up. I don't, yeah. somehow missed that. I don't know how I missed that. <laughs> it's like the most important oh, part. The whole time I'm just like, I just gotta get to the finish line first. Or was it even using the brake button at all? Oh man, that was a There's a brake button. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh dang. Yeah, Snuck in that one. Yeah, that's a tough one. You actually probably need to use the other bike for that to get over that stuff quickly. Alright, so we're gonna jump to that bike in this round. Yeah. Alright, let's do that. Alright, this is it, Corey. Yep. You need this one to stay alive. Gotcha, man. Let's do it. Mine makes more sense. I got the green mantis. It makes sense. <laughs> yes. That's cool. Careless Angel. <laughs> and his pinstripe pants. <laughs> oh, one. Oh. That's okay. There we go. Oh, nope. Drew yeah. made that job <laughs> <know>. lucky <laughs> oh, with no. skill involved. Oh. I do like how this is multiplayer. This oh, is fantastic. Were the other ones multiplayer? Uh, not all of them, no. Hmm. Whoa! Oh, it's so cool. Oh. Didn't get down fast enough. Oh, way up too high. Nice. True. I uh, know, oh, I'm there. I'm close. I'm You're close. Gonna lose. Oh, no. Corey, go. <laughs> no. Take the Titan down. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. That's my MO, man. Oh, right at the end. Oh. 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 It looks oh. like. <laughs> Down. Oh, <laughs> <All> again. <laughs> wow. All right. So now I got too many. Not. I think I. You still got it, because you had less mistakes. Oh. I, oh. I knew I had three mistakes, and I was like, I don't think Drew messed up that many times. Crap. Oh, <laughs> good game, guys. So there it is. I barely got that one again. I'm getting lucky. Just not the I end there. Lately, eh? in trials rematch. Oh, <laughs> I'm down. I'm absolutely down. So that right now. Close. That ends this game on segment. I have six points. Corey with three. Nate with three. Steve with zero. Let's head back to the show. All right, Scott. That's another episode this week. Each and every week, you guys hit us up at InsideTheGame.ca. We're there. You share your highlighting clips. Scott, who we got this week? This week, we got Mugs44 on the high seas. All right, Corey, it's time to suit up. Go get your javelin. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. Do it. Oh, come on, it's so good. Okay. It's hard. Turn your mic off, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Just to be safe. Yeah. I always hear you thinking. Okay, you good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone's favorite Hollywood nutcracker. Nice. Yeah! Yay. 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 Yay.